Hey guys, welcome to the shop. It's been two years since we did the ANA Vortex Supercharger upgrade to the C5 Corvette. And I put together a very detailed installation series on my YouTube channel. It's on your upper right hand corner if you're interested in checking that out. But over the past couple of uh, months, I've had a, quite a few people asking me to do a two year review. Kind of the pros and cons of the kit, things I wish I'd done differently things I wish I had known, and a lot of questions and answers. So stay tuned, let's walk through all of that right now. So the very first question everybody wants to know is, how much horsepower does it make? Well, with the V3 SI Vortec Supercharger and a 3.6 inch pulley, you can run 91 octane with very conservative timing or I'm running E33, just a little bit of extra ethanol added to my fuel. And we're at about 600 to the crank. Now keep in mind, that is an absolute bone stock LS1, stock exhaust manifold, stock exhaust. The only change I had to make to the engine itself, I upgraded it to LS6 valve springs because now I'm revving it to 6500 because with that supercharger on it, it just likes to rev to the moon. Second question I get asked all the time is, if you had it to do over again, would you? The answer to that question is in a heartbeat. Is ANA, Vortec, or anybody for that matter paying me for this review? Absolutely not. The only compensation I'll get whatsoever will be a few dollars from YouTube for the uh, video itself. Next question is, if I had it to do over again, would I do the installation myself or not? And the answer is absolutely I would. Now, I'm not a master mechanic, but I know my way around the garage, and I would say it probably took me around 25 hours, but I'm super cautious always, especially if it's my own vehicle. And you have to be really methodical just to make sure everything gets put together correctly. Now, in that 25-hour installation period, I didn't really run into anything that I would consider a major problem. We had a few issues, I would say, that, I had, that had to be addressed, and we'll get to those shortly. What about tuning? How is that handled? I would recommend you find a tuner in your area that is well respected for LS1s and have them tune it. Now I have a couple of years of tuning experience with my 11 second supercharged Fiero and I found the tuning aspect of this project to not be terribly difficult. It was time consuming however because you have to be methodical to make sure the engine's always operating at proper air and fuel ratios and ignition timing at all times. What's the quarter mile time with this kit? Well, as installed, with street tires leaving the line like a grandma, 195 60 foot times, it runs 11 and a half seconds at 130 miles an hour at the track all day long. How much does the kit cost? ANA Corvette currently has my kit advertised as I had it configured. I added the 80 pound injectors because I thought I might be running ethanol, uh, E85 ethanol. Anyway, uh, their cost right now is 58.50. Once in a while they run a sale and that knocks off a few hundred dollars from the price. Or you could give them a call right now and talk to Josh or Andy and see if and when they plan on running their next sale. Will a supercharger blow up my motor? It could, but you can minimize the risks if you are prudent. The risk of engine failure is minimized if you keep the crank horsepower to the low 600s or less for a stock LS1, keep all of your engine systems in good working order, and use the scan gauge to detect any knock. Are there any parts you'll need in addition to the ANA Supercharger kit? The kit is complete, but I chose to upgrade a couple of items as part of the installation. The first is a known weak point of LS1 engines, and that's the factory harmonic balancer. If yours is stock, you may want to upgrade to a better balancer. Mine was, so I went with the popular but inexpensive Powerbond balancer. And two years later, that's holding up nicely. LS1s have a weaker power steering pump pulley that should be changed out to a stronger C6 Corvette pulley. And C5 through Corvettes through mid-2003 having an aluminum power steering bracket that may break under the strain of belt pressures. Uh, so you may want to upgrade to the later 2003-2004 C5 power steering bracket as part of your installation. Can the stock drivetrain handle all of the power the supercharger puts out? For manual transmission cars on the street, I can tell you firsthand that the stock clutch held up for a while, taking it somewhat easy, but it did not like revving past 6,000 RPMs at all, which is where the supercharger makes tons of power. So plan on a clutch upgrade within a year of the supercharger install. 
I upgraded to the Monster LT1S one year later and I'm very pleased with it. As for how well automatic transmissions hold up, scour the Corvette forum threads for info and talk to ANA Corvette directly about it. They will give it to you straight. Why did I go with the ANA Vortex C5 kit? When I started researching C5 supercharger kits on the Corvette forum, I quickly noticed how unanimously impressed people were with the ANA C5 kit. What stood out even more was how satisfied people were with the customer support after the sale. During my installation, I had to call ANA a couple of times to go through an installation issue that I was having, and both times I got great tips that solved my issue in short order. To be fair and honest, I did not really evaluate the other companies, so I cannot speak firsthand about their kits or their customer service. Was there anything about the kit or the installation that I did not like? The kit's components are all top-notch, high quality, and absolutely no complaints. The installation instructions could use a couple of tweaks, in my opinion, to three areas. First, the installation of the pressurized plumbing that's located ahead of the passenger side front tire requires some further clarification and tweaks. There are a couple of stock screws that when you replace them, they're sharp, and if special care is not given, they could easily damage the kit's pressurized rubber tubing. Second, the instructions on how to thread and install the crank-cased vent to the stock oil cap was not correct in my instructions, and what should have taken about a half an hour ended up taking over two hours. I believe a a is now shipping the kits with the oil cap pre-threaded to accept the tubing. And third, the charge tube assembly that goes between the intercooler and the mass airflow sensor took a considerable number of tweaks and adjustments to get it to fit just right. A couple of uh, detailed photographs and maybe a few tips in the instructions might have made this a little bit smoother. All of these issues are addressed in the video series I put together of the complete installation of the C5 a a kit. You'll find the links in your upper right hand corner of the screen. Hey guys, if you like the video, please remember to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.